All right, it's Kinch again with the hexproof deck and popper. Be playing a is it post deck. Um, so basically, blue red um, with the posts. Um, this one I think in particular had um, quite a bit of removal and maybe some counter spells, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, and I, yeah, I, I, let's just look at the matchup. I don't remember 100% how the games went, um, but there were three games, so it was pretty close. And I think the play is pretty straightforward for this this deck. It's not always so straightforward for the player of the of the combo-ish deck. So here's my hand: Bogle, Guildgate. I I really I'm convinced I'm going to take the guild gates out um, and try something else. Um, the, all the white is for those for armadillo cloak and uh, the white enchantment, which the name is escaping me. But uh, I think the guild gates are just too slow, just too slow. Um, and if there's anything, I mean, this deck is fast and aggressive, and I want to speed it up. And having this guild gate in my hand is almost never, I've never said, great, a guild gate. And um, although I have said, great, a forest. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I think I need to get rid of that. So I think I keep this, um, makes sense, even though I have no enchantments. I figure I'm going to pull into them, but uh, I think I did. I, my sense is I keep this. I did. So yeah, having the guild gate like that, I I guess I wanted to see what my opponent was playing. He drops on the island, and um, whoa, what happened there? Oh, expedition map. Um, uh, forest. I should play Utopia Sprawl. which is a really good card um, and then say Silhana because I can yep just looking for an enchantment looking for an enchantment hoping he doesn't have electricery so he plays a mountain and says go. So now I know he's not, you know, when I saw Expedition Map, I'm thinking, oh, another Fisher Post deck. You know, Expedition Map almost always for sure means they're, they're going to go get Cloud Post. Um, that's what I always figure, but um, I could be wrong. So I was like, ah, oh, I'm, you know, I haven't played against an Is It Post deck. Um, much at all with any deck, so I didn't really know what to expect here. Um, the red didn't make me feel. I mean, I really shouldn't be nervous. All I'm really worried about is uh, electricery when this is not enchanted. Um, but you know, I have a couple. I have two others, so I'm not totally worried. And I can play the Narlid here. But first, we get in for one. Now we play the Narlid. Oh, I could also play the Bogle. But I, since I don't have... You know, I don't want to give him the chance to play Electricery and, and wreck me. So I, I, I think I just stay here and not play the Bogle. Yeah, I don't have any protection for him. Um, I don't want to unnecessarily give him a two-for-one. Now this kind of stunned me. Electrostatic Bolt. Um, two damage to target creature, if it's an artifact creature, it deals four. So it's kind of like shock, but it's better, right? Although shock can hit a player that, um, in this kind of deck, this is, this is better. This is obviously, you know, metagamed against affinity. 
but he does it against the Narlin. I was kind of surprised to see this. Really? You drop a Shimmering Grotto, and and then you bolt the Narlid, even though it's a three. I was like, okay. And then what happens? He bolts it again. So that's a two for one. I mean, that's. Uh, I, I'm very happy to see this. I, you know, for him to do that when there's no. There's a one on the on the board. I you know I don't. I don't know. I I think that's. Well, I guess. I guess that's really the only target he actually has is the Narlids, and since he can actually kill it with the two bulls, I guess that makes sense. All right, then now that I think about it that way, since he knows he's playing a hexproof deck and he sees a Narlid down, he's like, well. These cards are worthless. I might as well kill the Narlid before it causes too many problems. Okay, when I when I was playing that game, I really didn't understand uh, him doing that because that's two for one, and I'm you know a bad two for one, a two for one for me, and uh, yeah, uh, okay, but then it kind of makes sense after seeing that, after thinking it through, and I draw a mask. Um, yeah, well, you just play the mask, right? Seems simple enough. And now I can play the Bogle because I can't get um, I can't get two for one by Electricery. So yeah, he now he's got issues. Um, So he plays a cloud post and says go and I draw the ranker. Um so yeah, you throw the ranker on well, you throw the ranker on the ledge walker, because it does it's a two plus two plus zero. Um and the bogle even though this would come back to my hand, it's you know, I'd rather have it out there and be able to he's still got Electricery mana up. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put on the ledge walker. I'm saying this without knowing what I actually did, but that, that only makes sense, right? Swing for eight. He's suddenly on a two turn clock. Or he has one turn to play here because he's looking at lethal. Actually, he's looking at more than lethal because I just played the Gnarly. I think, well, he's going to counter it, right? Condescend, yeah. So the thing is, <clears throat> I mean, that, this is clearly the play that he needs to do. He needs, he can't, he can't survive a Gnarly out. But uh, the thing about these, uh, I guess I would. Uh, I'm not a control player, and. I mean, it's obviously some very strong decks are control decks. Um, but I really like beating them because the whole... I mean, look, look at the name of this card. Condescend. I mean, come on. Screw you. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, counterspell. Okay, fine. You countered my spell. But Condescend is a oh, whole little man. Not playing that or an Arlid. Not when I can condescend. Oh. So now you, now you really want to beat the deck. It's like... <laughs> Condescend me, you son of a... Fine, fine. I've got more. I have one card in hand. Bashing your face in with a elf. Not even a lot of the elves, just one. Uh, so he plays Moldrifter. Which is a really good card. I, it's a fantastic card. Uh, Moldrifter is. Um, oh... One of my last before recently when I was played a lot of limited in at the sh at the store near my house. Uh, it was back when this particular card was first came out, and you know it was one of those first 
you saw that coming into your pack in a draft and you snapped that thing up. These are really good card. Um, and when you have bounce effects, it's great. It's awesome. 2-2 two, two flyer um, for 5 and draw card. Pretty nuts. Great card. Expedition map. I do not fear an expedition map. Even though I know you're probably going to get a post of some sort with it. But you'll have to spend some mana to do it. Uh, so I do Ranker. Here, have some more Ranker. Uh, I have Trample too. So I think this is lethal, right? Yeah, so he just quits. Attacking for 12, he can stop two of it. He's got 10, he's dead. So yeah, let's... Uh, not sure what he could have done there. Um, again, the control decks are a little slow. This is turn six. I didn't have a crushing. I mean, Guildgate slowed me down. Um, but uh, the hexproof is kind of powerful. So let's go to game two. I think I played that fine. I, you know, I again. I think the level of <coughs> uh, skill required for the hexproof deck is minimal, um, so it's kind of a fun deck to play. If you're sitting, want to sit down and have some beers or something, the hexproof would probably be a really nice deck for you to play. Um, but the other ones, uh, yeah, this interface, I, I really must say that I'm not a fan. Not a fan. Well, I guess I'm a fan. It's better than better, better than the other one, but it still has these really weird behaviors, like this. This is just a weird behavior, right? You replay the game, and then it comes up and keeps this window up. So I need to get rid of this window. I mean, I guess I could put this to the side, which I guess I will do. But if you click it off, um, oh, actually, that's a good thing. Oh, I'll experiment. Maybe this is not bad. Okay, so. Um, not, not sure why Ancestral Mask is showing here. So he's going to go first. And do I want to keep? Yes. Oh, yes. This is a very good hand. Um, this is a good hand. Because you can go Forest, Utopia, Sprawl, pick White. Uh, second turn. Forest, Bogle, Ethereal Armor, Ranker, Swing. Um, so that gives you your your creature is going to be. Oh, wait a minute. I can't swing quite yet. But I'll swing next turn for much. It's kind of nasty. This is a really good hand. Uh, you're never going to send this back. So what do I do? Oh, I drew into a um, abundant growth. Okay, abundant growth. Where is that preview pane? Uh, abundant growth. Enters battle with draw a card. Awesome. Uh, Enchanted land has add one mana of any color to your mana pool, so it makes your forest a five color land. And I draw a card. That's pretty damn awesome. I mean, obviously it has drawbacks being an enchantment and stuff, but in this deck, that is awesome. If I could put 12 of those in there, I probably would, but I can only do four. So we abundant growth and pick the guild, yeah, guild gate. Guild gates are going out of this deck. Goodbye, sayonara. <clears throat> Um, so he plays the island and says go. Hmm. This is interesting. Bogle? No, Sprawl. Bogle? He says okay. Armor? Condescend! Okay. Fair enough.
I mean, that just would have been a blowout, right? So now he's got, again, he's got counterspell mana up. Um, so clearly, oh, I drew another guild gate. These have to go. Um, so I'm going to drop a guild gate, and I have access to three mana. So my thought is, I try to play Armadillo Cloak, he's going to counter it. So you should just go Ranker, counter. Okay, Ranker again. Um, although he's still going to be vulnerable to Electricery, but, you know, he's got four cards in hand. I He wants to answer stuff, and I, I want to keep on, keep the pressure up. Ranker? Prohibit. All right. Ranker? Ranker, go. Bash for three. Cheap spells, man. Cheap spells. Yeah, I remember this game now. I lose this. Um, do you want to guess how? It's fairly obvious. Look! I, I can only draw one more. There's only four in the deck. I play the cloak on him, so now he's at now he's five. Now I, I, what I'm wondering here is that um, was there a chance I missed at some point to? Uh... Oh well, basically what I'm gonna tell you is I never draw another creature here. Um, he has a trick to that got rid of my bogle, and. I had got him down to one, and I just got tired and just gave up um, because he had a lot of cards in hand. He wasn't doing anything, but um, I wasn't drawing creatures. I would have needed to draw like at least two so I could get him past his counter magic. But it took so long that it just never, never really happened. Um, so here's where I lose my bogle. He's on seven. I draw land, right? Again, land. So, and now he plays capsize on me. I do believe. Oh, no. He doesn't. Okay, it wasn't that time. He's down to two. Okay, now he's got all his mana up. He's got five cards in hand. I have a 5-3. He's down to two. I draw yet another non-creature. I think I play the Sprawl, right? Well, I didn't see a point in playing the Sprawl. It doesn't really matter, because these, these ones are just straight up enchantments that don't count the other enchantments, so it doesn't really matter. So I go attack, he plays Capsize on my Armadillo Cloak. Then he blocks. Um, this is a good play, obviously. Now if I had any kind of creature anywhere at some point, you know, so the rest of this just becomes me drawing and saying go. And he does some cloud post things. He does nothing. I mean, clearly, he does nothing. And I drew, like, lands and enchantments. Oh, I finally got a scout, but I had all this stuff up. And I was like, you know, let's just go on to another game. This is kind of ridiculous. Because if I play the scout, I mean, he's got seven cards in hand. He's got all this. There's just no way that he doesn't have all this mana. And he's got capsize in hand. Um, yeah, I, so I need another, at least, you know, I would need to get like three or four turns of drawing nothing but creatures so that I can try to get him past his counter magic. I mean, it's possible that I could win. Oh, he's up at four now. Uh, I just was not in the mood to play, to play all that many games anymore. You know, waiting for all that stuff to happen. Um, 
So let's go to game three. So I count that as a moral victory. <laughs> just, I mean, if I had drawn any kind of creature, I mean, I've got four, 12, 16 creatures in there, and I saw one after going through half my deck, so I don't, you know, whatever. Um, so now we go to game three. I, I, that was just a, uh, a typical magic kind of thing. <clears throat> and this is a nice draw again with the guild gates. I need to get rid of those. I'm sorry. There's just not. I mean, I kept this because I had the ancestral mask, three creatures, and a sprawl. I mean, this is a really good hand. If this is a forest, it's a great hand, but it's a freaking guild gate. Um, so I think I'm forced to just play a guild gate and do nothing on the on the first hand. Um, and then, yeah. Unless I do something else. I really don't know what I did. Oh, I guess I was... Oh, I played the Sprawl. Oh, no, I played that. Because I... Hmm. Anyway, you can see what the Guild Gates do to you. They kind of make you do stupid things. So the Ethereal Armor... Uh, this is a really good hand. If this is like anything but a freaking Guild Gate. Any land besides a Guild Gate. It's just, uh, I'm just, I'm just a little angry. And I play the sprawl on that. So I'll be able to untap and have some good beats. Um, he really can't do anything about the scout right now. Um, not when he plays cloud post. I mean, he could drop a, I mean, he could drop a red and play electricery and kill my thing, but, um, oh wait. Am I, how am I thinking about electricery? Let me make sure that I am actually thinking the correct way about electricity. Why is it, why is this doing this? Damn this interface. Um, let's look at my decks. Deals one damage to target creature. If you play it for overload, you may cast this spell if you change to replacing instance of target with each. <clears throat> so electricery would get, yeah, you, it, it doesn't target. You have to play it with overload, um, which is only, you know, a colorless mana, I mean, which they can, which you can do. Um, Anyway, it doesn't matter. He does that, and I just drop the bogle. And you know, he doesn't have enough answers for that kind of thing. Um, so uh, that's a long-winded way of saying I'm not really worried about it. Okay, so no land. I can play ethereal armor. I mean, I have, I have. Um, access to two mana here. Uh, so I can't play the mask. But I can play Sprawl on the forest, which is unfortunate because it's Enchant Forest. Now I'm kind of putting a bunch of eggs in one basket. Um, but I think that's really the play. I mean, once you get this thing out with the armor on it, you know, it just gets stronger and stronger. So, I mean, I think that's a risky play, but I think I need to make it... Um, These guild gates are just freaking killing me. Yeah. After I'm done with this, I'm going to go edit the deck. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. So, I, that's what I play. I play the... Oh, wait, I played the Bogle. And then the armor on the Glade Cover Scout. Okay. That makes sense, I guess. Yes. Oh, and I get, yeah, okay, now I'm getting greedy and putting right. So now it's a 4 4. First striking. I mean, I, I'm in a rush here. I, I mean, the longer the game goes on, the better chance he does has to find an answer to his. to my. bash your face strategy. So he plays stone rain on my forest. So that's, you know, that's a three for one. That's pretty harsh. Um, 
Luckily, this deck can get away with playing very few lands, but um, yeah, that hurts because then this also loses power. That's a big play. So, yeah, ouch. That would not have happened. That would not have hurt as much if I had a freaking forest in play instead of a guild gate. Okay, guild gates are on my list. Um, but I can go ahead and put Ranker on and bash some more. You can see I, how, I mean, how, what a pain in the ass this deck can be. I mean, I have one land. <laughs> I have one land, he three for one me, and he's still getting his face punched in. Mole Drifter. I mean, he's just he's looking for stuff. I mean, this is a first striker with trample. Um, he's not. That's not really a proper blocker. And he was did he did it for the evoke for the cards. And he's tapped out now. Yeah. Now I just play less with this one's enchant land and not forest, which is good. So you just play the guild gate targeting less growth. Now this one's going to be. Uh, you know, six four. Um, yeah, well, bash you. I mean, the combination of first strike and tramples is kind of nuts. And he quit. Yeah, you know, he didn't draw into anything. I think. I guess I don't know what his answer would be is if he could go off with a fisher thing he would send back well he's down by two and he can't he can't that doesn't even save him because if he sends all four of these back i just attack for two with my bogle and my and my scout um and he just dies so there you go um it's uh I'm not sure what the bad matchups are for this. I haven't played enough games with the Hexproof. Um, anything with non-targeted removal. Mono black. I think mono black uh, control is a little bit of an issue. But as long as you know you're playing it, you could, uh, you know, you try to play your your uh, play your creatures in multiples. So when you have to sacrifice, you don't have to sacrifice the ones loaded up with. Uh, Enchantments. Um, that might not always be possible, but I, I think it's it's a tougher matchup, and I I don't know if I've played it. I don't remember having played it, but uh, uh, these control decks are just too slow. Um, and you know, really, you don't even mind if they draw a fistful of counters because you have so many cheap spells. Um, they can't counter everything, uh, especially early. Um, they're only going to be able to counter one spell a turn when you're playing three or four. Um, it's kind of rough on them. Anyway, there's that deck.